Filthy intimate lives of Vatican popes throughout history. The Vatican has been home to numerous popes who have left a lasting impact on the Catholic Church and the world. While many popes have lived virtuous and dedicated lives, there have been instances of scandal and controversy within the papacy. It is important to note that these scandals represent a minority of popes and should not overshadow the significant contributions made by the majority of pontiffs. One of the most infamous periods in papal history was the Renaissance era, during which several popes were known for their lavish lifestyles, political intrigues, and personal scandals. Pope Alexander VI, also known as Rodrigo Borgia, is perhaps the most notorious of these popes. He was accused of nepotism, simony, and having multiple mistresses and children. Another pope, Julius II, was known for his military ambitions and was actively involved in the politics of the time. Alexander VI was known for his scandalous personal life and numerous love affairs. During his time as pope, he was accused of nepotism, simony, and having multiple mistresses and children. One of the most notorious love affairs associated with Pope Alexander VI was his alleged incestuous relationship with his own daughter Lucrezia Borgia. Rumors circulated that the Pope had an intimate relationship with Lucrezia, which caused great scandal and controversy. However, it is important to note that the veracity of these claims is still a subject of debate among historians. Paul II passed while sexually engaged with a male page. Paul II was a 15th-century pope who was engaged in minor conflicts for his seven-year tenure. Celibacy may have been an issue, as the manner and circumstances of his passing are disputed. Official accounts have him succumbing to heart failure after eating an excessive amount of melon. Other accounts, possibly originating with papal enemies, assert that Paul II passed during the intimate act of a young male page entering him from the rear. That he thoroughly enjoyed dressing up in elaborate vestments also contributed to rumors of effeminacy and homosexuality. Pope Leo XII slept with the wife of a Swiss guard and fathered three children. Born Annabel della Genga, Leo XII was one of the most conservative and unpopular popes of the 19th century. In his six-year reign starting in 1823, he instituted many laws and ordinances including prohibiting Jews from owning personal property, banning alcohol in Rome, and reintroducing regulations not seen since the Middle Ages. He was elected Pope despite his ill health, in fact, he was a compromise candidate who most believed would not survive for any length of time. Assigned by Pius VI in 1794 as Papal Nuncio to France, Austria, and several German states, he is believed to have conceived three illegitimate children in a dalliance with the wife of a Swiss guard. Believing that this would be his final appointment in the church seems to have given him a fatalistic attitude towards his holy obligations. He would live in poor health for another three decades, finally succumbing in 1829. Pope Alexander VI Pope Alexander VI had a passionate love affair with Giulia Farnese, who was married to Orsino Orsini. Giulia was renowned for her beauty and charm, and she became the Pope's mistress. Their relationship was well known, and Pope Alexander VI openly favored Julia, bestowing her with lavish gifts and privileges. Another significant love affair of Pope Alexander VI was with Venatza Catanii. She was a married woman and had several children with the Pope, including Cesare and Lucrezia Borgia. Their relationship lasted for many years and was marked by scandal and controversy. Pope Alexander VI was also rumored to have had a brief affair with Caterina Sforza, an Italian noblewoman known for her political prowess and beauty. Their relationship, if true, added another scandalous chapter to the Pope's love life. Apart from these well-known love affairs, Pope Alexander VI was reputed to have engaged in numerous other extramarital relationships and affairs. These relationships were often used to secure alliances, political favors, and financial benefits for the papacy. It is worth noting that the scandalous love affairs of Pope Alexander VI were not limited to his personal life but also had significant implications for the papacy and the Catholic Church. His actions and reputation contributed to the criticism and discontent that arose during the Renaissance period and led to calls for reform within the Church. However, it is essential to approach the historical accounts of Pope Alexander V.I.'s scandalous love affairs with caution, as many of the details have been exaggerated or distorted over time. 
The precise extent of his personal indiscretions and their impact on his papacy remains a subject of historical debate. Connected to the Spanish branch of the powerful Borgia ecclesiastical dynasty, he was appointed a cardinal by his uncle and eventually became the vice-chancellor of the Catholic Church, acquiring tremendous wealth by selling offices and indulgences to the wealthy. He didn't even maintain the pretense of celibacy, ultimately acknowledging four children with his upper-class Roman mistress Venatza Catanii. He had five other children from various other mistresses, children he claimed as nieces or nephews. His son Cesare, the model for Machiavelli's The Prince, would resign his cardinalate and marry a French noblewoman. Alexander's daughter Lucrezia would engage in various notorious affairs and three marriages. Historical speculation has abounded about her also engaging in intrafamilial relations. Leo X, the first Medici Pope, was also actively homosexual. Julius II's successor was Leo X, the first Medici Pope, the son of Lorenzo Medici, called Il Magnifico. His father cautioned him against the licentious atmosphere in Rome, you ought to be grateful to God, and continually to recollect that it is not through your merits, your prudence, or your solicitude, that this event has taken place, but through his favor, which you can only repay by a pious, chaste, and exemplary life. Maintaining such a virtuous lifestyle would, though, be difficult in Rome, that sink of all iniquity. Giovanni would probably meet with those who will particularly endeavor to corrupt and incite you to vice. Unfortunately, Leo X continued the money-raising practice of selling both indulgences and offices. He is also mentioned in two contemporary histories as having had routine involvement with male lovers, and he is listed as such in a modern who's who of gay history. Scandalous Pope Sergius III Pope Sergius III who served as Pope from 904 to 911, is associated with various scandalous rumors and allegations surrounding his love life. While historical accounts can be murky, here are some additional details about the scandalous love affairs linked to Pope Sergius III. One of the most prominent scandalous love affairs attributed to Pope Sergius III involves his alleged relationship with Morosia, a powerful Roman noblewoman. According to some accounts, Morosia and Pope Sergius III had a romantic relationship, and she even bore him a son named John, who later became Pope John XI. Their alleged affair and the resulting child caused considerable controversy and scandal within the Church. Another scandalous love affair associated with Pope Sergius III involves his purported relationship with Theodora, who was the daughter of the Roman senator Theophylact. Some accounts suggest that Theodora and Pope Sergius III were involved romantically, and she exerted significant influence over papal affairs during his pontificate. Pope Sergius III's papacy was marked by political turmoil and rivalries among Roman noble families. His alleged relationships with Morosia and Theodora were intertwined with these power struggles, and the influence they exerted over him led to allegations of corruption and immorality. It is important to note that the historical records regarding Pope Sergius III's love affairs are scarce and often based on unreliable sources. The tumultuous climate and power struggles at the time make it difficult to ascertain the precise nature and extent of his romantic involvements. In the 9th century, the papacy was embroiled in the notorious cadaver synod. Pope Formosus, even in death, was put on trial by his successor, Pope Stephen VI. The bizarre trial involved exhuming Formosus's body, dressing it in papal vestments, and subjecting it to accusations of perjury and necromancy. Pope Julius II had shameful ulcers. Born Giuliano della Rovere, Pope Julius II became Pope in 1503. Today he is most famous as the artistic patron of Michelangelo and other prominent Renaissance artists, and for the rebuilding of St. Peter's Basilica. He also ignored celibacy as a cardinal, fathering at least one daughter with his long-term mistress, whom he ultimately married off to the chamberlain of a cousin. Julius was tainted with another charge late in life, that he consorted with men, even common pro-street workers. The 1511 Council of Pisa condemned him as such, even including that he was covered with shameful ulcers, an allusion to syphilis. History has not rendered a verdict on this assertion, Julius passed of a fever in 1513. Julius III made his commoner boyfriend a cardinal. Giovanni Siacci del Monte, eventually Julius III, was a pope who ruled for five years in the mid-16th century. 
Perhaps he is most famous today for creating what was described as one of the most notorious homosexual scandals in the history of the papacy. While still a cardinal, Julius became emotionally involved with Innocenzo, a teenaged, illegitimate son of a beggar woman. After Julius met him in the streets, he was installed in the household of the cardinal's brother, who adopted him and gave him the family name. One of Julius III's first acts as pope was to appoint Innocenzo a cardinal. Although church historians have attempted to label this relationship as strictly platonic, at least one ambassador stated emphatically that Innocenzo shared the pope's bedroom and bed. Innocenzo was so incompetent that the pope had to create a special office for him with zero responsibility. Because of this appointment, Julius was mocked within Rome and throughout the various courts of Europe, with emissaries noting Innocenzo's coarse background and lack of sophistication. Upon Julius III's passing in 1555, his paramour's influence waned. He was eventually incarcerated by papal order after separate incidents involving murder and rape. Although he was still officially a cardinal when he passed in 1577, his memorial was private and unattended. He was buried in an unmarked grave in the Del Monte family chapel in Rome. Sixtus IV was embroiled in a sex and nepotism scandal with his nephew. Sixtus IV was another late 15th-century gay pope who flagrantly elevated young, attractive men to positions of authority within the Catholic Church. His favorite, his nephew Pietro Rierio, his sister's son, was made a cardinal in his twenties. Sixtus indulged his profligate relative, who literally wore gold-laden clothes, kept his own mistress, had several hundred servants, and threw parties stocked with young boys and pro-street workers that lasted well into the night. Although Riario reportedly ran up huge debts at the Pope's expense, he passed within three years of his position. Sixtus is also said to have given a special dispensation to the College of Cardinals to practice sodomy during the summer months. Although the Sistine Chapel was subsidized by him, Sixtus is remembered historically for deceit, nepotism, and heavy taxation. Classical historian Jacob Burkhard referred to him as the terrible Sixtus. According to Stefano Infeschera, Sixtus was a lover of boys and sodomites, awarding benefices and bishoprics in return for sexual favors, and nominating a number of young men as cardinals, some of whom were celebrated for their good looks. Infeschera had partisan allegiances to the Kalana family and so is not considered to be always reliable or impartial. Pope Benedict IX was a demon in the disguise of a priest. By all accounts, Benedict IX was not only a really bad pope, he was a really bad person. A contemporary called him a demon from hell in the disguise of a priest. Even the Catholic Encyclopedia, which is frequently accused of sanitizing papal history, refers to him as a disgrace to the chair of St. Peter. One of the youngest popes ever elected, in 1032 he immediately began spending the papal treasury in bordellos and on debauchery, hosting group sexual engagements that included men and animals. His behavior was shocking even by Roman standards, his first papacy ended when angry Romans rebelled and expelled him briefly in 1036. He would exploit politics and be reinstalled, only to be removed again in 1044. Benedict assembled an army and retook the papacy a third time in 1047. Wisely, considering his unpopularity, he decided to sell the papacy and get married. Typically, he soon changed his mind, throwing the political situation into chaos. He would eventually be forcibly expelled and excommunicated, after which he renounced his ways and later passed in a monastery in 1056. He is the only pope with three separate terms in the office and the only pope to openly auction off the position. Pope John XII transformed the papal palace into a brothel. Documented papal sexual misbehavior goes as far back as the 10th century with John XII. Named pope at the age of 18 on December 16, 955, John XII got the appointment through his father, a Roman prince who ruled the city for 20 years. John XII was most likely illegitimate, and because he was both the religious and secular leader of Rome, he ignored celibacy. He allegedly engaged in intrafamilial relations and is reputed to have turned the papal palace into a brothel. His passing was rumored to be at the hands of a jealous husband occurred who caught the pope engaging in adultery with his wife. Accused by adversaries of adultery and incest, Benedict of Sarac noted that he had a collection of women. 
According to Lyapran of Cremona, they testified about his adultery, which they did not see with their own eyes, but nonetheless knew with certainty. He had fornicated with the widow of Rainier, with Stefana his father's concubine, with the widow Anna, and with his own niece, and he made the sacred palace into a whorehouse. According to Chamberlain, John was a Christian Caligula whose crimes were rendered particularly horrific by the office he held. Some sources report that he died eight days after being stricken by paralysis while in the act of adultery, others that he was killed by the jealous husband while in the act of committing adultery. Pope Paul III openly flouted celibacy while a young guy. Alessandro Farnese, Pope Paul III, was a member of the wealthy and powerful House of Farnese, an influential Italian family during the Renaissance. His sister Giulia was reportedly the mistress of Pope Alexander VI. Farnese's youthful appointment as a cardinal was the result of this relationship. In his youth, Alessandro paid no attention to vows of celibacy, openly having five children with a mistress named Silvia Ruffini. All of these children would be recognized as his offspring and would achieve high positions of nobility in Italian society, most notably his son Pier Luigi Farnese, the first Duke of Parma. Although his children would be officially acknowledged in 1513, Farnese broke off his relationship with his mistress when he ascended to the papacy in 1534. As Pope, he is most famous for excommunicating Henry VIII and commissioning numerous projects of Michelangelo. Held off ordination in order to continue his lifestyle, fathering four illegitimate children, three sons and one daughter, by Silvia Ruffini after his appointment as Cardinal Deacon of Santi Cosimo and Damiano. He broke his relations with her. He made his illegitimate son Pier Luigi Farnese the first Duke of Parma. The Avignon Papacy A period when the papal court resided in Avignon, France, saw significant scandals. Popes like John XXII and Clement VI indulged in lavish lifestyles, accumulating vast wealth, and engaging in political intrigues that tarnished the reputation of the papacy. The Borgia family once again graced the Vatican during the Renaissance, with Pope Alexander V.I.'s nephew, Pope Julius II, and his illegitimate son, Pope Alexander VI, ascending to the papal throne. Their scandalous behaviors included engaging in wars, nepotism, and illicit relationships. In the modern era, scandalous episodes have continued to haunt the Vatican. The Vatican Bank scandal in the 20th century involved money laundering, corruption, and ties to organized crime, bringing significant embarrassment to the papacy. Furthermore, it is crucial to approach these accounts with caution, as historical narratives about the scandalous lives of popes can sometimes be influenced by political biases, personal rivalries, or later interpretations. The papacy, like any other institution, has experienced moral and their personal lives can be challenging to ascertain definitively. Overall, the scandalous love affairs attributed to Pope Sergius III contribute to the complex and intriguing history of the papacy, highlighting the interplay between personal relationships, political dynamics, and the reputation of the Church. During the time of his pontificate, scandalous lives of Vatican popes serve as a reminder of the complexity of human nature and the challenges that come with wielding power and authority. While these scandals have marred the reputation of the papacy, it is crucial to remember that they do not represent the entirety of the Catholic Church or its teachings. By acknowledging these scandals, the Church can strive for transparency, accountability, and reform. It is through learning from the mistakes and holding leaders accountable that the Catholic community can heal, rebuild trust, and continue its mission of faith, love, and service. As we navigate the complexities of history, let us remember that the true essence of the papacy lies in the teachings of Jesus Christ, which call for humility, compassion, and moral integrity. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment.